About 20 years ago, I went to San Diego State University to earn a master's degree in women's studies. And when I got down to San Diego, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to spend my time researching for the next two years. But then I came across this book by Judy Young on the history of Chinese women in San Francisco. And I was pretty shocked. It was the first Asian American studies book I'd ever seen after growing up in Washington State and having never been exposed to any kind of ethnic studies history. And I was quite angered, actually. I was like, what? There's a history of Chinese women in America and I don't know about it. It's not just, you know, my mom's family. So I spent the next two years jumping into Asian American literature and studying uh, ethnic studies and women's studies, sexuality. And so I brought all of these identity politics topics into my focus for my thesis, um, which was published in 1999, back in the year I graduated. And the title of my thesis was The Politics of Bisexual Biracial Identity, a Study of Bisexual and Mixed Race Women of Asian Pacific Islander Descent. So I spent about one year working on this thesis. I interviewed about nine women who are both bisexual and mixed race of Asian descent. I wrote a thesis that was 182 pages double spaced. I remember that because another classmate was also graduating and her thesis was 82 pages. So we were both pretty surprised by um, the other person's uh, difference of length. So in this thesis, I overviewed Asian American history, starting with the first immigration waves and overviewing the different immigration policies and situations of different Asian ethnicities as they arrived in the United States and set up a life here. I overviewed all of the literature at that time in um, bisexuality studies and queer studies. And then of course it was easy to cover all of the literature on queer Asian American identities. And so I compiled all of that into my thesis that had about four chapters. So the whole point of my thesis at that time was to put the bisexual and mixed race woman at the center of identity politics theoretical uh, understanding. So as identity politics has been construction, as you can tell by the additive kinds of language that are used, it's this heterosexual white man that's at the center of the model. And then every step further away on this linear and additive model of identity, um, you get this, you know, sense of um, double oppression, triple oppression, you know, with being a white woman is one step away from the white man and then um, being a person of color which is assumed to be a man and then therefore being a woman of color is more oppressed and being a queer woman of color is quadruply oppressed. This additive model really centers whiteness and so my challenge was to take a person of multiple identities, you know, mixed race, um, bisexual woman, female, and um, what would she talk about when she's talking about community, identity, history, about um, the relationships of, among power and inequality in our society? And so upon interviewing women and talking about their, how they view their identity versus the identity that's placed upon them, for example, I talk about how the government forms creates the census categories of race that we have to check off. And these categories are always changing with every new version of the census. There's new terms, there's new um, concepts, there's new boxes to check. For example, the mixed race box wasn't added until the year 2000. So it just demonstrates that this is a social construct that's created by institutions for their own purposes. And so it's for the, the, um, the person with um, multiple identities then, it's how, how is the identity pushed upon them? Like the multiple, the person with a more complex identity has to deal with not only how they're framed by this outside structure, the government labels, how society views these identities and the terms that they provide, and then how that person understands themselves. So I asked my participants how they define their own racial identity. And they say things like, you know, who's asking, um, you know, are you saying what, what box I check on the form or how I understand my, myself. 
And so of course, you know, the simple box checking answer is the most simplistic and flat, but how the participants understand their own identity is always um, very detailed, very specific to their specific ethnic heritage and those kinds of cultural markers. And then you add on, you know, so, so racial and ethnic identity are the first identities, you know, that we come into growing up. And then later we, we enter into our sexual identities. So therefore, for when, pe when folks um, later on are coming into their sexual identity and exploring their sexual identity, if folks are queer or questioning, then it's a bit more difficult within the Asian American context because within the ethnic communities, overwhelmingly within Asian cultures, um, you know, they're, they're quite homophobic and they really expect this um, heterosexual marriage and, and, you know, having babies in the future. And so to move away from that to be queer, the ethnic culture might think, well, that's, um, you know, a Western concept that's like um, American, what Americanization will do to your children. And so then this person goes to the queer community to look for community and support. And it's all white folks, you know, it's not folks of their backgrounds understanding their cultural dynamic and where they're coming from and the challenges of being queer within that specific ethnic Asian identity. And so when they're in one space where one aspect of their identity is included, um, another another part of them might be excluded. You know, if you're in a Chinese American community, um, it might be a homophobic environment, and then you go into a queer community, and it's all white folks. And so the sense of only part of yourself being belonging to a particular community, and never having that feeling that all you're completely welcome in this space, all parts of you. And so ultimately, my theory focused not on an essentialist identity categorization and sense of self, but it's really about building communities on um, alliances, on affinity groups, on people who have your back, regardless of whether what their identity is and how much it overlaps with yours. Because as um, you know, marginalized folks, we know intimately what it's like to be disappointed by your kinfolk, you know, your chosen community, people who you think that would really have your back and they betray you. And so sometimes it's, it's pretty surprising who does stand up for you. And so it's really based on this affinity model of who has your back and how we can support each other and in a multi, um, you know, and bringing in bridging communities and bringing communities together in solidarity. It's about creating communities of solidarity and support across these differences of uh, identities. So at San Diego State, I had this fantastic professor, Bonnie Zimmerman, and she really taught me how to write through this uh, master's thesis. She would mark it up all in red back in hard copy days. I would pick the thesis up from her house and go home and put in all those changes. And I really learned the process of writing through this um, exchange and her, her amazing editorial work. So from this master's thesis that was published in 1999, the year I got my master's degree, I was able to um, you know, spin this research off into various public and academic publications. In the very beginning, I, um, I wrote some short pieces for online websites and magazines. And so one of them was in the Multiracial Activist back in September of 2000, and it was called Longing for Life Outside of the Box. I also published another article in the Multiracial Activist in October, November of 2000, called Being Bi in a Monoculture Towards a More Inclusive Perspective on Race and Sexuality. And then another article with the multiracial activist called On Defining My Own Identity. So those were sort of some short pieces that were um, aimed towards a popular audience on the internet. So my first academic publication was published in Frontiers, a journal of women's studies in the year 2000. And this article was called Fence Sitters, Switch Hitters, and Bye Bye Girls, an exploration of Hapa and bisexual identities. This article blends together my personal story of 
growing up and understanding my mixed race heritage as I grew up in this white uh, city called Spokane, Washington. And then I relate that to other multiracials of Asian descent and their experiences as described in the academic literature. And so ultimately in this article, I talked about the impact of segregating multiple identities and theories of race and gender and how that results in a fracturing of self-understanding. The next academic article came out in the year 2000, um, Thamorist, Mythmaking from Past to Present. This was an academic journal from Amsterdam. And so this article was called Multiplicity in Identity Politics Monoculture Towards a Multiracial Bisexual Theory. And so in this article, I focused a lot more on the theoretical backgrounds of this topic. And so I overviewed bisexual theory and the main points that are inherent in this theory, but also how it does really ignore racial identity, especially back 20 years ago, talk about the erasure of race and um, the lack of information on bisexuals of color. I talk about adding race. Um, there's, well, there were very few books back at that time where folks talked about you know, being a queer person of color. I overviewed academic writings on multiracial identity and theory, which is often very black and white. And so having an Asian American voice within this field is, um, there were very few books at that time. And then I overview the queer Asian Pacific Islander books that were published uh, at that time and the ways in which these folks talk about the bringing their ethnic backgrounds into understanding and embracing their sexual orientation. So in 2002, I published an article that was in a more of a um, feminist magazine called Iris, a journal about women. And this article is called Memories from a Mixed Race Childhood. And so it was shorter and it really focused on my personal story of growing up in Spokane and the ways in which my parents taught me to think about my racial background, which was not very helpful at all. And a lot of mixed race folks or um, you know, Asian adoptees might have the experience where their parents really, they don't share your same ethnic and racial background and identities and they aren't very helpful in giving you the tools to understand um, how you can understand your own identity. In 2004, I had an article published in Matilda Bernstein Sycamore uh, anthology book that's Revolting Queer Strategies for Resisting Assimilation. And so this article is called The Price of Community, Bisexual, Biracial Perspectives. And this was a short article that distilled my interviews uh, information into basically a roundtable discussion of how the interviewees identified as bisexual, biracial, what that meant to them within their lives, their relationships, and their communities. In 2005, I was featured in the anthology edited by Robin Oaks called Getting By Voices of Bisexuals Around the World. And this was basically just a short and sweet one page biography overviewing uh, me and lots of other people from around the world to just talk about how different folks understand bisexual identity. In the year 2012, I had an article published in the Journal of Bisexuality called The Price of Community from Bisexual Biracial Women's Perspective. And in this article, I also reviewed my research of the nine bisexual and mixed race participants about their conceptualization of identity-based communities. Uh, and finally, the most recent article was published in 2013 in this uh, anthology, Selves, Symbols, and Sexualities in Interactionist Anthology. And the article that I published in here was called The Challenges of Identity Formation for Bisexual Multiracial Women of Asian White Descent. And so this article then focuses on the interplay of racial and sexual identity as the participants discussed it. For example, one participant says, well, my gender is a little queer, my sexuality is a little queer, and my race is a little queer, and I guess I'm just a little queer. I talk about how Eve playfully brings her multiple identities to the center of analysis. And so you're starting from this, the starting point of queerness and complexity. And so it's 
is on a, it's a completely different conceptualization of identity than this singular additive model. So it was fantastic that I wrote this um, master thesis over 22 years ago, and it's still really relevant in the literature of today. Women's studies has really moved in a way to incorporate multiple identities and uh, intersectionalist analysis. And so I was able to publish a lot of academic articles and popular articles out of this research that I conducted. So I was really excited that my master's thesis was able to produce this kind of volume of publications, especially in consideration that my PhD dissertation, after many, many, many years of hard work transcribing, interviewing 50 participants, on this global justice movement only resulted in one publication. So you just never know, you know, what's going to be popular with your publications. Thank you for listening to my overview of my early research on bisexual and mixed race identities. And if you're someone who's doing research in this area, I would love to hear from you. And you can check out the links to my articles in the description below. So let me know what you think. Thanks.